Welcome to our channel, where we focus on relationships and the challenges people face in everyday life. Today's video will dive into the ups and downs of managing a busy career while maintaining a strong relationship. Let's get started. As a journalist, my job often keeps me far away from home. I spend a lot of time traveling for different projects, which means I'm always on the move. I'm 31 years old and married to a wonderful man who's 34. We met during one of my work trips and instantly fell in love. We've been married for four years now, and after we got married, we moved into the house I inherited from my father. It's a special place that holds a lot of memories, and now it's where we've built our life together. Both my husband and I have demanding jobs, so we share the responsibilities of covering our expenses and bills equally. However, because of our busy work schedules, we rarely get to spend quality time together. We're often away from home for long hours, and by the time we get back, we're too tired to truly connect. This has led to some arguments here and there, mostly because we feel like we're missing out on being together. But over time, we've managed to resolve these disagreements, so there haven't been any major issues in our marriage. For a while now, we've been planning a much-needed trip to reconnect and unwind. Unfortunately, our busy schedules kept getting in the way, especially because my work was really hectic. I had to move from one city to another for various assignments, so our road trip plans kept being pushed back. We had this idea in mind to take a road trip to a distant city, stay at a nice hotel, and then return home after three days. We promised each other that the moment we found a little free time, we would finally go on this trip. We even saved up some extra money so that we could treat ourselves to a stay at a five-star luxury hotel and enjoy fancy dinners. Finally, the moment came. I got an opportunity to return to my hometown for work, and I managed to apply for a four-day holiday. I was thrilled. I packed all the essentials, and my husband and I set off on the road trip we had been eagerly waiting for. The excitement was real as we started our journey. We took turns driving, played our favorite songs, and spent the drive laughing and talking about everything under the sun. It felt like we were finally able to let go of all the stress and enjoy each other's company. It was one of those moments that made me feel like life couldn't get any better. After a long drive, we finally reached our destination and checked into the hotel. Luckily, we had booked our room online in advance, so everything was ready when we arrived. We were both so excited to spend this time together and create new memories, not knowing what surprises life had in store for us. We arrived at our hotel room, feeling exhausted from the long journey, but excited for the time we were finally going to spend together. After freshening up, we got dressed and decided to head down to the hotel's restaurant for dinner. The atmosphere was perfect, and we were both in great spirits. As we sat there, enjoying our meal, we talked about all the lovely memories we had shared over the years. It felt like everything was falling into place, and the evening was blissful. We were both so happy to be there, just the two of us, away from all the stress of daily life. Once dinner was over, we were too tired to do much else, so we headed back to our room and went straight to bed. I remember thinking how perfect the day had been as I drifted off to sleep, grateful for this rare moment of peace. The next morning, when I woke up, something fell off. I reached out to the side of the bed where my husband had been sleeping, but he wasn't there. At first, I thought he might have gone to the bathroom, so I waited for him to come back. But after a while, it felt like he was taking far too long. I started to worry, so I got up and knocked on the bathroom door. There was no response. My heart started to race, and I felt a knot forming in my stomach. I slowly turned the knob and opened the door, but to my shock, the bathroom was empty. My husband wasn't there. Panic started to set in as I quickly got dressed and rushed out of the room to look for him. I tried calling his phone, but the call wouldn't go through his number was unreachable. My mind began racing with all kinds of terrible thoughts. Where could he have gone? Why wasn't he answering? I was so scared that I started asking random people in the hotel if they had seen him. I even checked with the front desk, hoping he might have gone out for a quick errand, but no one had any information. Growing more anxious by the minute, I ran to check the rental car we had parked outside the hotel. To my horror, the car was gone. My mind was spinning. Did he leave without telling me? What was happening? I thought maybe it was best to wait in the room, thinking he might return soon, 
but I couldn't calm myself down. The anxiety was eating me up inside, so I decided to leave the hotel and continue looking for him. With very little cash on me and no idea where to go, I somehow managed to find a way to get back home, hoping I would find answers there. When I finally reached home, I noticed that the door was already unlocked. My heart was pounding in my chest as I cautiously stepped inside, not knowing what to expect. As I entered the house, I saw my husband lying on the floor crying and struggling to breathe. Around him, there were broken photo frames and shattered flower vases scattered all over the floor. The sight was so chaotic and confusing that I didn't know what to think. Seeing me, my husband slowly got up, his face filled with pain. Through his sobs, he said, she's ruined me. She's left me with nothing. I was completely taken aback. I had no idea who he was talking about, so I asked him, who are you talking about? In a wave of emotion, he finally confessed that he had been seeing another woman someone he had met at a nearby college. He admitted that he had been in love with her for over a year and had been secretly seeing her behind my back. His words hit me like a ton of bricks. I felt my entire world collapse around me. My head was spinning, and I couldn't bear to listen to any more. I left the house immediately, feeling utterly shattered and betrayed. Since that moment, I've been staying at a friend's place, unable to face my husband after everything that has happened. When I finally collected myself enough to confront him, he had the nerve to blame me for his affair. He said that I was never there for him, that I was too absorbed in my work to notice he needed someone by his side. He claimed I was too focused on my career, saying I had no real value for our relationship. Hearing those words only made the betrayal cut deeper. How could he say that? How could he blame me for his own choices? I had always thought we were a team, but now I feel like I never really knew him at all. I just can't wrap my head around this. How could the man I fought for, the man I stood up to my parents for, be the same person who betrayed me like this? I argued with my family to marry him because I believed in our love, believed he was the one I wanted to spend my life with. Every part of my life revolved around him. I cared about him so deeply and put my whole heart into making our relationship work. While I was giving everything to our marriage, he was off with someone else, someone much younger, being intimate with her while I was completely unaware. What makes it even worse is the thought that our house, our bedroom, was being used behind my back when I wasn't home. Just imagining that freaks me out. How could I have been so blind? Looking back now, I realized there were small signs, tiny hints here and there that something was wrong, but I never gave them enough attention. I ignored the gut feelings and trusted him completely. Now, I feel like such a fool. I can't even look at myself in the mirror because I feel like I was being played this whole time, like I was a clown in this twisted game. And to think, he had the audacity to confess everything to my face. He told me that he fell in love with this other girl, a girl who ended up leaving him for someone else. Now he's sitting here, heartbroken, crying about his loss, as if that's supposed to make me feel sorry for him. How can I even process this? How could he tell me he loved someone else while still being married to me? And now, he's heartbroken because she left him? The whole situation is so absurd that I can't even comprehend it. So, here's the latest update on my situation. My husband came to me recently, begging me to take him back. He's claiming that he made a huge mistake and that he's ashamed of what he did. He keeps saying that everything that happened was just a terrible blunder and he never intended to hurt me. But while he's apologizing, he has the nerve to tell me that I'm partly to blame for all of this. According to him, if I had been more aware or vigilant, I could have figured out his affair much earlier. He even had the audacity to say that it was my carelessness and lack of attention that drove him to cheat. He says he needed more love and attention while I was busy with work, and that's why he turned to someone else. It's unbelievable. Even if I had been absent or preoccupied with my career, does that justify his actions? How can he try to pin the blame on me when he's the one who made the decision to be unfaithful? And if he really loved this other girl, how can he now sit here and say he's heartbroken because she left him. It makes no sense. His apologies, his begging, it all feels so hollow. Now, he's saying we should try to fix our marriage, that we can work on things and make them better. But how can I see a future with someone who has betrayed me like this? How can I rebuild trust after everything he's done? 
I knew deep down that I couldn't continue living this lie, so I finally gathered the strength to file for divorce. I refuse to spend the rest of my life with a man who has treated me so poorly and broken my trust. As soon as he found out that I had filed for divorce, he went completely off the rails. He started acting irrationally, calling me nonstop even though I refused to answer. When I didn't pick up, he took it a step further calling my friends, my parents, even some of my coworkers, trying to turn them against me. He's been telling everyone that I was never really committed to the marriage, that I was always looking for a way out. He's trying to paint me as the one who is at fault, when in reality, it's him who destroyed everything. I can't believe this is my reality. The man I once trusted with my heart, the man I fought so hard for, has turned into a person I barely recognize. His actions have shown me that he's not the man I thought he was, and I know now that staying in this marriage would only bring me more pain. I deserve better than this, and I'm determined to move forward and rebuild my life without him. When I finally have a small reason to stand up for myself, he accuses me of creating a mountain out of a molehill. As if that wasn't enough, he's also questioning my character now. He's been telling people that I work with male colleagues and travel with them, implying that I'm somehow untrustworthy. Hearing this broke my heart into a million pieces. How could he say such things about me? I've always been respectful, always honored our relationship, and never gave him a reason to doubt me. Yet, here he is tearing me down and attacking my character, all because I dared to stand up to him. I can't believe this is the same man I fell in love with, the man I fought so hard to marry. He used to be my whole world, someone I thought about constantly, someone I built my life around. But now, it feels like he's become a stranger. How could he stoop so low as to insult me like this? He doesn't even think before speaking these hurtful things. To make matters worse, my parents called me, asking me to reconsider my decision to divorce him. They believe that, in every way, we are perfect for each other and that I should give him another chance. They're worried about what my life will look like after the divorce. They think I'll be the one to suffer while he moves on and finds another woman, just like he did before. But the truth is, I don't care anymore. He could find himself three new women, for all I care, and it wouldn't make a difference to me. There's no room for him in my life anymore. I don't understand why my parents want me to stay stuck in this toxic situation with a man who has proven himself to be immature and unfaithful. I'm a well-established woman. I have a good job, a stable income, and I own my house. Why should I compromise and give him another chance after everything he's done? Did he stop to think about our marriage when he was involved with that younger girl, someone who clearly didn't care about him, or our relationship? Of course not. So, why should I be expected to overlook it now? My friend supports me completely and has told me she will stand by me no matter what decision I make. Her support means everything to me, and it helps remind me that I deserve better. As for the house, I'm the one who owns it, and I've decided I'm going to kick him out. He doesn't deserve to stay here, not after everything he's done. I think that's part of his problem, too. He knows he'll be homeless unless he moves back in with his parents, and that thought probably terrifies him. But that's not my concern. He made his choices, and now he has to deal with the consequences. My husband is nothing but a selfish, ungrateful man. He had a loving wife who built a career, owned a home, and worked hard to keep the marriage alive, yet he still betrayed me. Just because I was busy with work and away for some time, that didn't give him the right to do whatever he wanted behind my back. It doesn't excuse his behavior, and he knows that. Even now, after everything, he still isn't truly ashamed of what he's done. He's still asking for reconciliation, as if things can go back to the way they were. But he never stops blaming me, saying I should have known what was happening. How could I have known? I trusted him completely, and he took advantage of that trust. Looking back, I feel sorry for myself. During that road trip, I honestly thought everything was perfect. I thought we were finally getting back to a good place in our marriage. Little did I know, my husband had already broken our vows long before that trip, and all my efforts to make things right were wasted on someone who didn't deserve them. Now, I see things clearly. There's no going back. I'm moving forward with my life, leaving him and all his lies behind. And though the road ahead might be uncertain, 
I know I'm doing the right thing. I deserve better than this, and I'm not going to settle for anything less. I'm honestly relieved that everything has finally been uncovered in such a dramatic way. Now, she can stand up for herself and make decisions without living in the dark anymore. The real issue here is clearly her husband. He's the one who caused all this pain, yet I can't understand why her parents are pressuring her to go back to him. Why would they want her to return to a life filled with lies and betrayal? This is a time when they should be standing by her side, offering support and understanding. She's going through one of the hardest moments of her life feeling shattered and broken, and instead of helping her, they choose to back her husband, who clearly doesn't deserve their support. It's heartbreaking to see that her parents are pushing her toward a future that's filled with darkness, all because they believe she should stay married. In reality, this is the moment when she needs them the most. She's in a fragile state, trying to find her strength again, and it's painful that her own family is siding with her husband, the very person who betrayed her. She shouldn't be pressured or made to feel guilty for wanting to leave someone who doesn't value or respect her. She's a strong, independent woman who can take care of herself. She earns her own living, has the means to afford a life without him, and is confident in her decision to move on. I truly believe she'll lead a much better life without that shameless cheater dragging her down. I admire her for her courage in choosing to walk away, despite the pressure from her parents. She knows what's best for her, and she's not willing to compromise her happiness any longer. One person who deserves a lot of appreciation in this situation is her friend. Not only did her friend open up her home and take care of her while she stayed there, but she also supported her in her decision to separate from her husband. That's what real friendship looks like being there when someone needs you the most and offering a helping hand when life gets tough. In this case, her friend is acting more like a family member than her own parents, who seem to be trying to push her back into a miserable situation. Meanwhile, her family, instead of offering love and support, seems determined to push her into a hellhole by making her go back to her cheating husband. It's shocking that her friend is the one acting with more care and compassion, while her parents seem to be blinded by their desire to see her stay in a marriage that's clearly broken. Sometimes, friends can feel more like family than your own relatives, and this is one of those moments. Switching gears to a different issue, I've been dealing with a problem at home that's been bothering me for a while now. Ever since our daughter was born, my wife has developed this unhealthy habit of buying way too many clothes and toys for her. Our daughter is only five months old, yet my wife is already buying clothes for her that go up to two-year-old. As a stay-at-home dad, I'm the one doing most of the baby-related work, so I know firsthand that we don't even change our daughter that often during the day. She barely wears half of the clothes my wife buys for her, and I honestly don't see the need to keep hoarding all these outfits that we won't use. Instead of spending money on things our daughter doesn't need right now, I think that money could be used for more important things, like saving for her future preschool fees or even just adding to our savings for emergencies. The problem is, my wife doesn't seem to see it the same way. After she finishes work and helps with the house chores, she goes straight to her phone and starts browsing online, especially on Amazon. She orders these baby clothes in bulk without a second thought, and she doesn't even talk to me about it. Some of the clothes she buys are from high-end brands, which we don't need, and I've been too afraid to let our daughter wear them in case she stains or ruins them. It's frustrating because, at the end of the day, our daughter is going to grow out of these clothes within the year, and all that money is being wasted. It's not like these outfits can be repurposed or used for long, so what's the point? I decided to take matters into my own hands and gave away some of the clothes designed for ages 8 months and above. I passed a few along to my sister, who also has a baby girl, and donated the rest to a local charity that helps single mothers. I feel like it was the right decision. Our daughter already has more than enough clothes to last her a year, and we don't need any more. It's hard to understand why my wife feels the need to keep buying more when we already have plenty. At this point, it's better to put that money towards something that will actually benefit our daughter in the long run, like her education or savings for her future. But for now, at least I've cleared some space and helped others in need with the clothes that we won't be using. I wasn't planning to tell my wife about what I had done until things took an unexpected turn at a recent family gathering. My sister was there with her little girl, and as fate would have it, 
my niece was wearing some of the very clothes my wife had bought for our daughter. When my wife noticed, she immediately confronted my sister and found out the truth that I had given those clothes away. My wife was furious when she realized what had happened. Looking back, I can understand why she was upset. Maybe I'm the one to blame here. I should have asked for her permission before giving the clothes away, or, at the very least, I could have tried to resell them to get some money back. But deep down, I knew she wouldn't agree with that idea. That's why I felt like I had no choice but to make a tough decision on my own. From my point of view, those clothes were better off with someone who actually needed them. Our daughter already had more clothes than she could wear, and there was no point in keeping more that she'd likely outgrow before getting a chance to wear them. I tried explaining this to my wife, but even after apologizing and sharing my reasoning, she's still upset with me. I just wish she would stop this pattern of impulse buying clothes for our daughter, especially since I've talked to her about it several times before. It's not that I don't appreciate her wanting the best for our little one, but the constant buying is unnecessary when we already have so much. To clarify, my wife is responsible with our finances in other areas. She pays all the bills and expenses on time, so we don't have any issues there. But I'm concerned that her impulse buying could eventually put a strain on her earnings. The money she spends on extra baby clothes could instead be going into our joint savings account, helping us build a more secure financial future. Some people might say I'm the a-hole in this situation, and maybe they're right. I can see how giving away the clothes without telling her wasn't the best approach. But at the same time, I genuinely believed I was making a practical decision. Our daughter is only five months old, and babies grow quickly. The clothes I gave away were for ages eight months and older, but we already had plenty for her to wear. I figured it made more sense to give them to someone who needed them, rather than just letting them sit there and used. But then again, maybe I got it wrong. Some might say that it's completely ridiculous to give away brand new clothes that would fit our daughter in just a few months. After all, baby sizes aren't always consistent, and kids go through growth spurts all the time. I guess I didn't fully consider that we'd need to have the next couple of sizes available for when she grows into them. It's not like my wife was buying clothes that were way too big or completely unnecessary. Having clothes ready for the next stage is practical, and by giving them away, I may have created more of a problem. Now, in a month or three, my wife might have to buy even more new clothes, which will cost us even more money. Another thing I didn't think about is that I've been hesitant to put our daughter in some of the nicer outfits my wife bought, just because I'm afraid she'll stain them. But now, I realize how silly that sounds. She's a baby. Of course, there are going to be messes. If the money has already been spent on these clothes, why not let her wear them? Whether it's a $10 onesie or a designer outfit, she's going to outgrow it in no time anyway. A stain here, or there isn't going to matter in the long run. I should have just put her in the clothes, taken a few cute pictures, and let the inevitable mess happen. Babies are messy. That's just a fact of life. What I should have done from the start is have a grown-up conversation with my wife. We could have talked about setting a budget for baby clothes and discussed whether buying high-end brands was really worth it. Maybe we could have agreed to return some of the designer outfits or at least limit how much we spend on them. If she's completely unwilling to compromise and it starts affecting our ability to save money, then that's something we'd need to address. But getting rid of clothes that would fit in just a few months without discussing it first? That was a mistake. I can see that now. It didn't really benefit anyone, and in the end, it just created more tension between us. So, in this situation, I might be the a-hole, but it's something I'm willing to work on. I just hope we can move forward from this and find a better way to manage things in the future. We recently had senior recognition for my team since the regular season is over. Each year, the seniors are recognized for their accomplishments both on the team and academically. They are escorted by their parents and receive a framed uniform as a gift. When introducing the seniors, they say, Here is first name, last name from hometown, escorted by her parents, mom's first name, and dad's first name. I asked my coach not to use my mom and stepdad's last name because it's different from mine and brings up some uncomfortable feelings. I'm 25, and I asked my mom and stepdad to escort me since they were there for me almost every day of my childhood. They supported me through the good and bad times, even when I was a difficult teenager. My stepdad stuck by me and loved me, 
even though I didn't like him at first because he wasn't my biological dad. I thought it was impossible for him to love me as much as he loves my half-siblings, but he always did. To me, they're not half-siblings, they're just my siblings. On the other hand, my dad, stepmom, and half-siblings lived in another state. I saw them during some school breaks and holidays, but once I started practicing every day, I saw them less. My dad and stepmom would visit me once a month, but my stepmom always seemed upset that my dad would spend time with just me during those visits. My dad and stepmom came to my last competition of the regular season. I hadn't told my dad it was senior recognition because I didn't know he was going to show up. When they found out, my dad was sad and my stepmom got upset. I told them both that they are part-time parents and that it didn't make sense for them to expect credit for raising me or supporting my athletic career when they lived so far away. Later, my dad called me crying, which is rare for him. He told me how much he loves me and how hard it was for him to be away. My stepmom just lectured me, saying they did their best by visiting once a month. Now, I feel a little guilty for not telling my dad about the recognition and for yelling at him. But my theory about my stepmom not wanting me to have my dad's attention all to myself still feels true. I don't think I'm in the wrong here. I also imagine that my half-siblings might feel the same way about my dad choosing me and my mom over them when we were younger. I was a baby and didn't understand what was happening, but looking back, I can see he didn't treat them fairly. After asking my parents some vague questions, I'm pretty sure it was mostly my mom's influence, about 80% and 20% my dad's fear of causing problems or conflict. If you want a relationship with your dad, I'd suggest directly asking him why he hasn't been around and whether it was because of your stepmom. You're still young, so if you want to, you can try to fix things with him. My half-siblings are in their late 30s and early 40s now, and my father has already passed away. Either way, though, you're definitely not in the wrong here, and you never will be. You're not at fault. Being a parent who only shows up during vacations is a choice. If your kids are important to you, you do everything you can to be part of their lives. Your dad chose not to be involved, and from the sound of it, your stepmom encouraged that choice. They can't expect anything from you. That said, if this situation has made your dad realize he's been absent, you could sit down and talk to him, just the three of you, about how you've seen his role in your life and what you'd need from him if he wants a better relationship with you. But that decision is 